Hello. Welcome to Woody's Den. Do you have a fire like this at home? I like a nice, old-fashioned coal fire. Well, not many people have coal fires nowadays. Not as many as when I was little. Then, lots of people had coal fires at home, and, and, and most houses had lots of chimneys. See what I mean? And under every chimney, there might have been a smoky coal fire. Do you know what this is called? It's a coal scuttle to keep the coal in. And I put the coal on the fire with these tongs, like this. The tongs stop my hands getting dirty or burnt by the fire. I've had these old tongs a long time. They were my grandmother's. <laughs> ah, that's better. It's warm enough to make myself a nice piece of toast with a good old toasting fork, like this. There we go. Now, I've got a question to ask you. What work did you do today? Uh, no, I don't mean school work. I mean work you get paid for. So now I'll ask you again. What work have you done today? I mean work sort of like this. Here's Dad and he's coming home from the office in his car. Oh, he's had a hard day's work, but today's the day he gets paid. Mum's home already. While the children are at school, she works at the local shop. She's had a hard day, but well, she's got paid as well. Give me a hand, Gary. And Gary helps her wash up and tidies up his bedroom. Give me a hand, Dad says to Sharon. And Sharon helps Dad clean the car. Ah, you've been a good girl, says Dad. Gives her 50p. I've been a good boy too, says Gary. <laughs> yes, you have, says Mum. And gives him 50p. But just this once. And back from school comes Brother Paul. He did a paper round before school. And he's got paid. And big sister Lisa's back from school as well. She's going across the road to babysit for the neighbours. And then she'll get paid. So... Everybody's done some work, and everybody's got paid. Well, this time, even Gary and Sharon got 50p each for helping Mum and Dad and being good. But Gary and Sharon and Paul and Lisa's real job is going to school. Now, what I'm going to tell you about today happened a long time ago longer than we've talked about before. And it's a story about a time when most children never went to school at all. But as soon as they were old enough, everybody in the family went to work. Now, you remember my nice fire and the coal? Well, to tell you my story today, we've got to find out a bit more about coal and where it comes from. Do you know where coal comes from? Before it gets in the scuffle, I mean. Coal comes from a coal mine deep underground. Where machines dig out the coal. See the coal? Coal miners work the machines. And the drills. It's dirty and dangerous work, but it's still very important for all of us. Would you like to work in a coal mine underneath the ground? I don't mean when you've grown up, I mean now. And I don't mean just the boys, I mean the girls as well. Because there was a time, long ago, when that's just what you might have done. No school, just work. 
but it might have been under the ground. And this is how I know. This book is a report that was written more than 150 years ago, in 1842, by people we call inspectors. And it's all about children like you working down the coal mines. Here's some of the pictures from the book. They're drawings of young people working down a mine. Drawings because there were hardly any photographs in those days. The inspectors had been told that there were boys and girls working down the coal mines and they set off to find out if this was true. Now today, we're going to a coal mine and we're going to find out more about the inspector's report. Well, here we are at Chatterley Whitfield Mine. Well, it's closed down now. It's been closed for nearly 20 years, but it can still help us because now it's a museum, a coal mining museum, just the place to come to find out how life was lived long ago. Now, here are Helena and Dawn, David and Gareth, they're friends of the museum, and they're going to help me find out more about the inspector's report. So if you want to go off and get dressed, then I'll see you down the mine, all right? <laughs> so I'll put on my miner's helmet, and I'll ask Mr. Crossel, one of the museum's guides, to take me down the mine. Here we go. pretty dark in here, isn't it? That's what this light on the front of the helmet must be for. It's a long way down. Here we are, down the mine, deep underground. And now I'm going to pretend it's 150 years ago, and I'm an inspector, one of the inspectors in that report. So, ready to go back 150 years. My name is Samuel Scriven, inspector, and the overseer is to take me to where the children are working. Dark and damp down here, and hot and stuffy too. And through the darkness I can see the light of a candle. And there's a boy sitting on the floor of the mine. Good day to you, boy. What is your name? John Savile, sir. And how old are you? I'm seven, sir. And what is your work here? I'm a trapper boy. Trapper boy? I open and close the door like this. To make sure the air and the pet is good. And when the wagons come, I must open the door and let the wagons pass. What are you doing with that stick? This is my tally stick, sir. Tally stick? I make a mark whenever a wagon goes by. If I don't do that, I get beaten. When do you come to work? I get up at four and, and I get to the pit at half past four and, and I begin work at five. Five in the morning? Yes, sir. And I finish at five and go home. So you work in the pit uh, for 12 hours every day? Yes, sir. Uh, and you have only that candle for a light? This morning, my father gave me four candles, sir, and when they are burnt out, I shall sit in the darkness. You must be very lonely. Yes, sir. Sometimes I sing when I have light, but not in the dark. I dare not sing then. Thank you, John Savile. Thank you, sir. Well, I 
I'm deeper in the mine now. What a terrible place for any human being to have to work. I can see more children coming. Why, this time it's two girls. Good day to you, child. Good day, sir. And what is your name? Anne Firth, sir. And what is your work here? I'm a hurrier, sir. And so is Jane. A hurrier? And what does a hurrier do? We pull these wagons full of coal to where the mine is riding and the horses can work. That must be very hard work. Oh, indeed it is, sir. The roof is very low. And I have to bend my back and legs. Do you ever go to school? Yes, sir. I go to school on Sundays. As soon as I shall be able to read and write my letters. And what are your wages? Five shillings a week, sir. Do you like your work? Oh, no, sir. I have no liking for the work, sir. My father makes me like it. Thank you, child. Thank you, sir. What do you think Mr. Scriven and all the other inspectors said? Do you think they thought it was right for John and Anne and all the other children to work down the mines? No, they didn't. And they said so in the report. And because of that, the people who owned the mines were not allowed to make little boys and girls work for them anymore. Of course, there were other places that children were sent to work as well. Big factories out in the fields, into rich people's houses to be servants, or up chimneys to keep them clean. I dare say they worked in places near where you live. <laughs> but that's another story. So, if you ever see a piece of coal, think about all the miners underground and little John Savile and Anne Firth long ago. Because, because of what they said to Mr. Scriven and what Mr. Scriven and all the other inspectors wrote in their report, well, that's one of the reasons you go to school today and not work. But you can still help Mum wash up, eh? <laughs> Keep your bedroom tidy. But don't expect to get 50p for it every time. Bye-bye. Mm.